Tragedy struck in just last Friday when a two-story building for a school collapsed in Plateau State, resulting in 22 deaths and 132 injuries. The incident occurred at a school with a population of 400 students with around 200 people in the affected section. Speaking on the development, the immediate past uh, president of the Nigerian Institute of Building and Board, and of course a board member of the Council of Registered uh, Builders of Nigeria, Professor Johanna Izam, called on state governments to intensify action against building collapses by formulating policies that will ensure effective construction practices and monitoring of uh, the building environments. Now joining us is Commissioner for Information, Plateau State, Musa Ashams. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good to have you. Um, just quickly give us uh, updates on uh, the story. It's been a very, very heartbreaking scene. Uh, the uh, number of people, of course, who have been affected by these families, of course, who have lost children and, and all that. So give us um, updates as of this morning. Where are we with this very sad incident? Um, it's excruciatingly painful to go through this lane. And it's just a sad Mr. Ashoms, are you still here with us? Okay, it would seem that we're having network challenges connecting with him. But we're hoping that we can have conversation. Okay, yes. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Ashoms. Please go ahead. And as of this morning, the number of persons hospitalized has reduced drastically. And we're praying that we'll have more discharges. And um, the major issue is that um, those at the just University Teaching Hospital those are the worst hits. We have about six of them there. Some of them are going to be going through MRI scanning this morning to ascertain the level of the injury they have. And um, if you go to the Plateau State Specialist Hospital, we have only about six um, patients now. And at the Bingham University Teaching Hospital, which is popularly called Jankwano, we have only about four. In all our hospital, which hitherto we had 61 patients, we now have 12 receiving medical treatment. So as as, um, as they are treated, they will be discharged. And um, as a government, we commiserate with families that lost loved ones. And of course, you know, this is a sad situation. Young stars, young people and their teachers just um, trying to receive an education. And at the end of the day, they lost their lives. As at um, yesterday, the principal of the school was um, called by the police so that he'll be interrogated, so that questions will be asked. And um, this morning, the owner of the school, which they say is um, late, but the management, there are people administering the school, they also will appear before the police so that they will give us a true picture of what has happened. Shockingly, they've not even gone to the police to report that their school has collapsed. They just um, zapped. And I think that is unfortunate. And as a government, we are, we are sad that our young people um, lost their lives. Well, we need to use this medium to tell you that um, our unison was reignited by this incident. You recall that at, on the day that this happened, the chief imam of the Just Central Mosque was about to be buried when the building collapsed. So the aid group of Jamaat al Nasri Islam was among the first to bring aid, the fire service, the civil defense corps, the Nigerian army, the police, vigilante, neighborhood watch, and of course, neighboring communities also brought help. So we want to use this medium as a government to say we should continue on that lane because it's a positive one. There's a need for us to be united as a people, especially in instances like this. But the most right. unfortunate thing is that- I, I, I wanted to ask, I mean, you've highlighted it's good news to hear that we're seeing a lot more people being discharged from the from the medical facilities. But let's talk about how we got here in the first place. Could this tragedy have been prevented? Some students report that they saw cracks on the walls. Some of the parents in their interviews have said that the, the school was overcrowded. So would you say that this could maybe have been avoided? There, there is complacency from both ends. Well, you know, when people have this kind of tragedy, you shouldn't add salt to injury. You know, when you bring your children to school, you're supposed to check the environment where they learn. It's not just about homework, it's not just about assignments, it's not just about continuous assessments. 
the school the school environment is very very important there are a lot of things you know when you go into school in business you must have a tender heart you must love humanity you must love children you shouldn't just be concerned about um, um letters and um numbers you should also be concerned about the welfare of these um, young people and of course their teachers it will interest you to know that the tragedy would have been bigger than this if um, national examination council had its um, own exams that day that is why ss3 students were not involved majority of those that were, that were involved are secondary school senior students of the um, ss1 and um you know the the we heard from reliable sources that some children even told their parents that they weren't going to go to school and you know the weakness is that when these things happen you should report to constituted authority you are the government in that vicinity in that locality at that time so government cannot be everywhere but you can be at, at that particular position if you had if they had reported government would have sealed that um, school just like we have sealed it now and we have sounded a caveat to other schools because now with this with this um, occurrence, you hear parents say, in my school, in child school, there's a crack on in, on one of the walls. In my child school, the laboratory does not look um, um, strong. It appears it is good, it is bad. So we must not wait until tragedy strike before we take the necessary actions. You know, on the plateau, we have the executive order 003. People have laced it with a lot of sentiments because people have um, had their ways. People have, um, whatever they do flies. And there's a government that wants to put the state on track and people wanted to make a political capital out of it we are not um, happy that this has happened but it's a sign that there are a lot of things that need to be done and the responsibility oh. of fixing this thing lies with the ministry of environment with the just metropolitan development board with the plateau state environmental protection sanitation agency and um they are going to we have been synergizing and we're hoping that a lot of more buildings will, will go down and uh, except if remedies are put in place. And you can see that the governor has um, instituted a, a professional, a, a, a body of professionals to look at these buildings. And of course, we have um, co we have warned owners of institutions to also look at these things. You shouldn't be engaging quacks in building right, structures. There are professionals. That is why there's a building department, the university, there's a department for town planning, there's a faculty for envi environmental sciences, there's a faculty of, of engineering, so people cannot just go to school and you allow them waste away. When you just have money, you buy road on your own, you buy cement on your own, and you become a builder. All right, it Mr. is Ashram, a profession, can you hold on? and they're a professional. Yeah, can you hold on? I, I also want you to speak on other things uh, with the time that we have. Um, a few parents have also complained in the, one of the news reports that we've gotten that you know they had to pay some of the bills at the hospital you know is this true um is the plateau state government responsible for all the hospital bills from the people that you mentioned you said 61 when they said in the hospital there were six in another hospital is the plateau state government taking care of every single one of these bills can you confirm that from 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 the moment they were evacuated from the debris from the rubbles we made it clear that nobody should pay a dime and we have synergized with the medical directors of all of these hospitals that nobody should take a dime. So I don't know where this story is coming from. Government has taken the responsibility of paying the bills of all the people affected in this um, unfortunate act. So if anybody says he's paying any money, I, I, I think we have to investigate further. Okay, great. And then another thing I want to know, there's the Plateau State Emergency Management Agency. Is it fully functional? Very, very functional. You heard the DG of NEMA even um, terms, giving them a thumbs up because yeah. they worked in synergy. All the emergency response units on the plateau were reactivated, were activated to swing into action. For your reporter, I think even um, saw them on ground. It was, it is, it was uh, functional. It came to the aid of our people and it worked well. Yesterday yeah. when the what, name what, it, was- So, so this is what I wanna, I, I would like to go on, but this is what I want to find out. When you say it was functional and it worked well, can you clarify how long it took for these you know, rescue teams to get to the site from the Plateau State Emergency, Emergency Management Agency? How long did it take? Was it a 30 minute drive, 20 minutes? You know, was it 10 minutes maybe before they were on ground with the equipment that you say, said they had? Because I saw some of the equipment there. Um, I'm not sure what you know, that is, if that is necessarily for rescue um, um, uh, mission. But, can you clarify how long it took? Which, 
I don't know which equipment you're talking about because we had payloaders, we had yeah, fire the, service. Probably the payloaders I'm referring we to. We had ambulances. Hello? Yes, go ahead. We had payloaders, we have um, bulldozers, we have ambulances, we have fire service equipment. And like I told you, the responses came in layers and it was a synergy. The state management agency works in concert and in tandem with the National Emergency Management Agency. I don't know what is obtainable in other states, but on the plateau, there is a cordial relationship between NEMA and SEMA because what they do is similar. What they do is um, almost the same. It's just that one is national and one is in the state. And people didn't complain about the time of response. But like I told you, it's like um, God made the AMFS aid group of the Jamaat Nasri Islam the Nigerian army, and the police was not even far from the scene of event, uh, accident. Immediately, people swung into action. For example, I arrived there, me personally, an hour after, and I met people and, and on rescue mission. And a lot of people came, even human traffic. We had to even bring public address system to tell people to move away so that um, the, the situation does not escalate. So the response was prompt, it was quick, and it did a lot. If not for the quick response, maybe the number would have escalated. All right. Um, let's also talk about the role that the government has in ensuring the quality of structures uh, that are set up in Plateau State. We have report here that the governor has specifically asked and instructed. Um, no, the government equally emphasizes the importance of adhering to established safety standards. But there's uh, an order, the Executive Order 003. The government has urged schools and other facility owners with structural concerns to close their facilities immediately. So let's talk about the role that the government has in ensuring that you know there's there's uh, Nigerians in Plateau State are living in in quality uh, buildings. What is this, the procedure? for giving out approvals for, you know, building. Can you say that it is firm, it is tight and without any form of uh, compromise? Where would you say the blame lies? Would you say that they do structural uh, inspections to ensure that the buildings that are being uh, erected are in line with the approvals that have been given? There are ethics and codes in, in the building industry. It will interest you to know that if you go to the Just Metropolitan Development Board, as far back as, back as 1940, a man applied that he was going to change his door. The laws are still extant. Nothing has happened to them. It's just that um, because um, a lot of things fly in this country, people just build when they have money. They can just go to the building material market or anywhere they can find products and they will make a quack supervise their house. Or maybe because they've owned uh, like three, four houses, they feel they are experienced enough to build houses. You know, the Just Metropolitan Development Board is saddled with the responsibility of checking your plan with you. When you have a plan, you can bring it, and um, they will check the land. They will look at the soil type, whether it can carry what you want, and they will help you on, on all, all the way. But go um, along the line, we've had compromises here and there, and today these are the things that are happening. Now, the government in the Executive Order 003 has not isolated houses that are standing already. If you've had a house, you will still have to bring the plan to JMDB so that it will be looked into with you and other professionals. Because in the JMDB, we have different units and different departments. So they are professionals. And again, you know, if government does not have the political will to ignite some of these things, they don't happen. Like in the, in the last eight years, there has been civil servants have been doing manning um, JMDB. So sometimes the will is not there. Today, we have a young man who is an architect by training architect Hart Bankhart, who is the general manager of JMDB. And um, there's a committee that has been set up already. House, uh, houses have been marked. Because it's not just about this house that, um, that um, collapsed. There are buildings or communities that when you go, if it rains for two, three hours, it will just be flooded. And it, will t it tells you that there's something wrong with the waterways. That's why some months ago, we went to the British American area where we demolished buildings and people started listening it with political undertones. We are not here to be politically correct. We are here to fix Plateau. We are here for the aesthetics of Plateau. We are here for the um, health of our people. We are here for the sanity of our people. We are here to protect lives. And of course, you know, welfare and right. protection of life is sacrosanct as far as the governance of Nigeria is concerned. And His Excellency, by Mr. Kelly Management, is doing that. Yeah, all right. Um, I, we hear you. Um, before you go, uh, 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 can the producers, there's a, there's a video of um, Governor Muftuang visiting 
ch uh, children in the hospital. Can we have that video on screen quickly, please? Um, I would like Mr. Shams to just quickly share with us. There's a, a video that I saw just now. Um, Mr. Shams, I'm, not, I'm sure if you can watch us. I want you to just quickly confirm what hospital exactly uh, this is. It should show in just a few seconds. Honey, hold on. It's, it's going to be on your screen in just a few seconds. Yeah. Can you confirm what hospital this is? We, we went to four hospitals. I don't know which is this. Well, if it is the one with the blue paint by the gate, it's the Bingham University Teaching Hospital, where okay. the governor visited um, sick people. And he was also at the Our Lady of Apostle Hospital. And of course, the Plateau State Specialist Hospital. Okay. All right. Brilliant. I, 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 I was uh, trying to x-ray the uh, quality of health care that these people were getting, but we probably would speak about that at a different time. Thank you very much, Musa Shams, for stopping by. Um, we, of course, you know, send our hearts um, and condolences to the people of Plateau State and those affected by this very, very sad disaster. We look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you for having me. God bless Plateau State.